very quickly, are you pessimistic or optimistic about the decision in our own future? Yes or no? Optimistic or pessimistic? Uh, I, I would say having good president is very good. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. I mean, political, political system is very, very important. So, uh, both <laughs> is very important, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Uh, next speaker is uh, Dr. Zhui Wang. Dr. Zhui uh, Wang. Uh, my distinguished colleague, from National Health Research Institutes in, here in Taiwan. Uh, Julie is a graduate from this uh, National Taiwan University in public health and received her PhD uh, in England. And uh, Julie has been a well-accomplished investigator and has made a significant contribution in the area of developmental, uh, environmental exposure and uh, its uh, health impact. So this is uh, the topic uh, Julie is going to cover in her presentation. So let, let's give uh, uh, Dr. Wang a round of applause. Uh, with uh, thank you for a very kind um, introduction from uh, Professor Huang. Uh, as I talked to uh, Professor Kish, he is almost the number one immunologist <laughs> Uh, he, uh, here in, so, uh, in, in Taiwan. So uh, I have a lot of uh, uh, advisory from him as well. And it's a great honor uh, to present um, uh, this uh, talk on uh, is there prenatal exposure uh, a lifelong fate. So uh, I want to start with um, the TIST um, study from Yu Chen cohort and then bring, uh, birth cohort establishment and then um, some health effects and the question to be answered. Um, we know that there's a new chain uh, episode, um, a usual episode in Japan and new chain episode in Taiwan. And when I just uh, uh, um, arrived at NHRI, um, I looked into some new uh, chain study and I found uh, the uh, children born to mothers with um, PCD exposure, they tend to have a um, neurological uh, disorder. And the various, um, uh, in the very pre prestigious uh, journal, like JAMA, and uh, other um, health effects as well. But not so much um, for skeleton, uh, cartilage, uh, bone marrow, and so on. So uh, when I look into the textbook, uh, um, the DBS, concerning the DBS of primary germ layers, um, its external uh, uh, is the all layer and uh, very easy to be exposed to various um, environmental hormones, which is lipophilic and in easily transferred to the placenta. So um, I propose to look at the truth as well. And then, um, I found that uh, although with very few numbers, uh, the children with um, uh, mother exposed to higher level of PCB and PCDF, they have significantly higher uh, dental problem, like a uh, bone with neonatal teeth and various uh, um, uh, like crossbite and uh, uh, various mental defects uh, in their teeth. So, um, and um, I listen to um, my mothers and my grandmothers, they say, uh, listen to the music. And also in England, I heard about Barker hypothesis. Uh, it's a, a medical doctor who uh, firstly introduced um, the Doha developmental origin of health disease uh, with the observation of uh, um, women, pregnant women with um, famine who, who have um, their children uh, with cardiovascular diseases er very early in, the, um, in their lives, like um, 30s and 50s, um, and um, also die early. And the other, um, 
Example is ES uh, exposure. Um, the girls born to have mothers, born to mothers have DS exposure, uh, have vaginal cancer uh, during prepubertal ages, and also arsenic uh, uh, mice model. And so I uh, recruit um, the pregnant uh, women uh, in the middle of Taiwan, um, and they, they have a mean age of around 28. They are quite fit. I think in general have better condition than me, and the dream uh, very less. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we have all uh, different kinds of uh, questionnaire, and uh, also um, the urine and blood uh, specimens, and uh, also DNA. And every two to three years, we follow them once, uh, like this, um, uh, the bone. Uh, at birth and three years, uh, five years. Uh, this is the scenario how we uh, um, play with them and uh, uh, also have a pediatrician uh, go through with them. And this is Dr. Su uh, who attended meeting yesterday. And also five years. And surprisingly, they are not afraid of blood drawing. They show that they are so brave to be blood drawn. So we are very lucky. And so uh, until 11 years and 15 years, so we are now analyze the data and we are going to follow them uh, again this summer. So uh, they can do um, properly a uh, lung function test and here as well. So we start with around uh, 600 and uh, with around 400 with um, maternal uh, specimens and uh, uh, with, uh, today I'm going to show with both um, uh, everything uh, they, uh, available is around 150 in each cycle. And I would like to focus more on uh, Dalit um, today because of the um, high, uh, the scandal you, you might have heard in uh, 2011. Um, and also um, uh, some hormone uh, changes and so on. So uh, when, when this is published in uh, the year 2011, uh, we, we, we um, previously found high exposure, but we didn't publish because we are not sure we are correct or not. But when the um, news coming out, then we know, um, yeah, uh, people uh, drink um, phthalate. Uh, from their uh, daily uh, drink, like uh, uh, the, the bottles from the 7-Eleven. Uh, so we found the urinary level is higher in two, three years, and then uh, going down. Uh, we told mothers um, still breastfeeding, because um, it, it's uh, water soluble, not liquid soluble. And we surprisingly found that uh, the MNBP uh, is uh, quite accumulated, and uh, in uh, cold blood, which means the fetus has uh, exposed to MMBP. And also we compare um, the level in our population is uh, more, is higher. Uh, the title cohort which I'm uh, presented is in purple color. So it's higher uh, than the later birth cohort teenage. And it's also higher for MDHP uh, than NHS in the United States and uh, Netherlands, uh, Norway, and then BT as well. But uh, it's not higher than uh, uh, for MDT. So uh, the endocrine uh, and reproduction uh, uh, shows that uh, cobalt, uh Free testosterone decreasing with increasing um, prenatal exposure to phthalates. Uh, the MHP is the DHP uh, metabolites. And also um, uh, in the figure, in the, uh, I, I think I'm going to, I, I'm not going to present in more, in very details about the phthalate uh, because uh, it will be in detail in the S uh, in the afternoon at 2 o'clock, um, uh, S10 uh, symposium. 
So uh, we consistently found um, decreasing direct hormone in relation to prenatal exposure uh, to phthalates. And it, it, it could be translated around two, three to 10 percentage thyroid decrease by every increase of one standard deviation of DHP. So we also like to look at um, neurological and behavior uh, effects because um, it could be affected by uh, hypothyroidism as well. And uh, this is uh, decreasing testosterone, decreasing estrogen, and also decreasing uh, uterus size and decreasing ovarian volume. And the uh, children behavior uh, of normality uh, increase with increasing prenatal exposure to uh, phthalates as well, uh, mostly men and women. And this one shows um, they have more uh, uh, aggra aggressive um, here, more delinquent behavior and uh, aggressive behavior, achieving a clinical uh, uh, level. And also this de de uh, decreasing IQ uh, on the average of, uh, of uh, six points uh, for those who have uh, higher exposure and uh, high quartile exposure group. And also immune and obesity. Uh, it's interesting that uh, for allergic children, it's highly correlated with um, IgE, but not so significant here. Maybe uh, it's the number, but um, postnatal exposure to uh, thyroid is also important. Other other, uh, there are other examples like uh, perforal archaeal substances have similar finding as well because um, it's also uh, uh, quite um, concerned in environmental hormones in Taiwan. And also the decreasing um, IQ in relation to prenatal exposure to uh, perforal archaeal substances. And further, uh, my colleague has done a uh, very beautiful uh, animal models parallel with uh, an, uh, human uh, findings. And this one even show uh, the obesity, um, uh, like, like uh, atiposgenesis uh, with uh, increase, with increasing MBHP um, from uh, low dose to high dose. And so, um, and, and such uh, fat could be movable to be to in uh, liver and further studies are ongoing. So uh, why uh, such results and how, how about the me mechanisms? Um, recently, uh, epigenetic change in relation to environmental change have been uh, studied. Um, uh, and we found uh, cold blood DNA methylation could be changed uh, dramatically uh, by prenatal exposure to phthalates. If this uh, further away, yeah. And particularly for uh, the male boys. Uh, Professor Thomas will present uh, in more details about uh, DNA methylation uh, by uh, environmental factors. So uh, we also found um, particular genes um, are affected uh, through uh, DNA methylation uh, controlling endogenous uh, response. So why some chemicals tend to have uh, such a transgenerational effects, um, but not other like nickels and so on. So my understanding is uh, it's not so uh, genotoxic. Um, there is a high plasticity um, and, uh, um, uh, and more and more um, studies show um, uh, endocrine disrupting uh, could be, um, have more effects, like um, DS, bisphenol uh, A, uh, phytoestrogen, and so on. So uh, when um, mother's uh, sperm and egg, um, uh, become fertilized, uh, it's fertilized during the fertilization, 
in the installation uh, level will uh, drop. Uh, and we call this steam cell uh, around this time. And during the uh, pregnancy, it's very easy uh, to be affected by in vitro environments such as chemicals uh, affecting DNA methylation. So um, uh, at birth, uh, they have some uh, uh, persistent DNA uh, methylation and uh, altered DNA expression has been ongoing. And there's, uh, there's also animal models uh, showing uh, such uh, evidence. So um, we also uh, have opportunity to increase our um, uh, sample size to answer uh, more questions we yet uh, answered. And uh, in different, different stage of life, there are different factors and uh, call act on the health. So it's really a long way to go. And this is the study um, still ongoing. Uh, although um, DS has been banned uh, more than two decades ago, but nowadays, uh, they, their children, for example, their girl, their girl babies have become uh, mothers nowadays. And they have significant return delivery um, for bone to mothers have exposure and uh, some biomarker. And also preeclampsia. And even breast cancer. So, um, if uh, we induce more um, new um, methods and technology, maybe we can target on environmental cancers as well. So this is the animal model uh, provided validity. Their um, genomic DNA are exactly the same, but just one uh, DNA uh, was uh, methylated, uh, silenced, uh, uh, and then manipulated uh, turned on and then they have such difference, although they have the same environment, the same uh, diet and, and, and exercise, maybe. So we also look at our uh, children, they uh, exert a similar. Um, and I would like to, lastly, would like to uh, point to important uh, in, uh, uh, information uh, here in Taiwan. Uh, every couple has um, sometimes one, or even less than one baby nowadays, as compared to Japan, United States, and France. So uh, the fertility, uh, yeah, we, we need more babies, and maybe an environmental hormone is an important uh, issue in Taiwan. And also, I was in, inspired uh, by the talk uh, by Professor Emmett uh, the other day about the um, uh, metal pollution, uh, like John Fasco, or interior um, BMW, uh, Mercedes, the interior um, uh, accessories were uh, producing a lot in uh, middle Taiwan. So um, we, we also went to the communities and they really um, need to know more uh, about um, such industry may also cause problems. So my answer uh, is yes uh, to prenatal exposure life won't fade. But still, uh, early life um, exposure control could be mediate um, the fate. I would like to uh, thank to uh, my colleagues and my uh, advisors and uh, uh, the hospitals uh, clinicians which I have been working with um, uh, for many years. Um, yeah, and uh, the funding is from National Health uh, uh, research Institute, Minister of Health and Welfare, uh, and Minister of Science and Technology. Thank you very much.